I'm about to tell you why the 2021 NBA season could be the greatest year ever. Mark gets Bradley from three. Like and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to get notifications anytime I make a video, and follow your boy on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops. Let's get into this. Now, before showing you every reason 2021's NBA season starting December 22nd might very well be the best year ever, I've got to quickly go over what went down in 2020 and then declare what must happen for 2021 to be as good as it could be. For many reasons, the NBA's had its worst year in history, from losing a commissioner who brought the game to new heights and David Stern, to of course the shocking tragedy of Kobe and his daughter, the hearts of NBA fans took a heavy hit to start the new year. When the league returned after the pandemic, the new no-fan environment took a lot of the hype away that comes along with watching an NBA game. A finals highlighted by LeBron James drew the lowest ratings on record in a championship series. Along with the eerily quiet building they played in, here's why I think those ratings were actually so low. No matter mine or your ideological beliefs, it's hard to look over the fact that Black Lives Matter being in the middle of the court drove fans away. When people watch sports, they don't turn it on to be told how to think, they turn it on for the entertainment. Bottom line is, if you appreciated the social justice messaging on the jersey and kneeling for the anthem, there's still no denying the fact that a good percentage of the audience the NBA once had was turned away by that. We know what identity politics does. Uh, it, it divides and it polarizes. It's crucial that next season the NBA chips away at being known as the league that gets politically motivated and sticks to strictly basketball. Because if 2021 is gonna be an extremely marketable year for the NBA, given we get fans at some point, then that's what has to happen. They have to stick to what's going on between the lines. Adam Silver recently declaring that BLM won't be written on the court next year is further proof that as woke as it seemed at first, it ultimately hurt the league's ability to make its typical revenue. But the fact that the NBA will be back in arenas this upcoming season is a great sign because the bubble environment just wasn't it. Having said that, a ton of eyes that weren't around during a historically bad 2020 may be forced to turn their attention to what's gonna happen in the 2021 season. Tons of basketball's most elite players who've built up a ton of popularity and who can swing outcomes of a playoff bracket are returning to play next season. John Wall of the Washington Wizards, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson of the Golden State Warriors, plus Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving of the Brooklyn Nets are all expected to be back at 100% December 22nd. That means that LeBron's Western Conference and Jimmy Butler's Eastern Conference have a lot more contenders than they had this past year. As difficult as the tear LeBron and AD's 2020 run was, going through three well-built teams in the Blazers, Rockets, and Nuggets, trying to take four games on two of the greatest shooters of all time in the Splash Brothers is a whole different animal. And last month on October 6th, Steph Curry promised great things from the Golden State Warriors in the 2021 NBA season. He said, quote unquote, you look at the West and look at the teams that are in the bubble and how deep it was, and you add us back into the mix next year, it's going to be wild. He also said, quote unquote, we just need talent. I like the position we're in with the assets that we got and the guys coming back off injury. I think we'll get it right. Our front office has gotten it right over and over. And I expect nothing different coming back from this tough year that we just had. More on the Warriors' chances in the Western Conference next year are coming up. But moving on to KD, Uncle Drew, and the Nets. After winning his second straight finals MVP in 2018, Kevin Durant seemed to have taken over as the best player in basketball. However, there were also people who saw the 73-win team around him and asked themselves how much did Kevin Durant really carry the Warriors to a championship. After Durant's Achilles tear, which kept him out the entirety of 2019-20, and what Leonard did in the 2019 Finals, and what James just did in 2020's Finals, I'd put KD currently as the second or third best player in basketball, of course behind LeBron. But after joining the Nets in free agency, the seven foot sharp shooting shot creator is going to be out to prove in 2021 that he can individually lead a team to a championship. Even though the snake will have Kyrie Irving next to him, there won't be generationally great players everywhere else, and Durant will certainly have to carry more of the scoring load than he did in the Bay. Although, the pieces around Brooklyn's two All-Stars are still very much in place for them to make a deep run in the East next year, potentially win it. Three-point specialist Joe Harris, upcoming guard Karis LeVert, and a dynamically scoring point guard Spencer Dinwiddie 
combined to average 53.8 points to lead Brooklyn into the playoffs last year. So adding two of the top 10 players in the world, the Nets shouldn't be taken lightly whatsoever by their fellow East contenders next year. Meanwhile, for the Washington Wizards, John Wall's been looking beastly in some recent workout videos where he's been going at it against Kyrie Irving as well as former NBAer Michael Beasley. Since 2017-18, Wall's missed a total of 173 games, which included missing all of this past season, leading the Wizards to plummet in the standings and miss the playoffs for two straight seasons. Based off the tape, the Wizards will be getting back the prime version of John, and that addition alone instantly puts them right back in the mix in their conference. Because with the player Bradley Beals developed into, with the explosive talent that the five-time All-Star John Wall's proven to be, we've never seen this duo's combined ability at this high of a level. Just listen to how hyped this backcourt is about being back on the floor together. A couple weeks ago was his first practice, and he just brought a spark. Get him off! Get him off! Get him off! I was like, dang, like, that's what we've been missing the whole year. Like, we haven't had that. Let's push this meter and see how well we can get, how well we can be, see how well these young guys can grasp this concept of winning, develop them, and then by the time John, he's ramping up the way he is. He's a pro, he's an all-star, he knows what to do. We can free flow by the time John's implementing. Beal made a great point there at the end because with the impressive young assets that have developed in the Wizards system since Wall's injury, this Washington team has become seriously well-rounded. We still have the draft and offseason to go through until we reach the holiday season and the 2021 NBA season kicks off. So what you're about to see aren't my official predictions, but here's where the Warriors, Nets, and Wizards stack up in their conference. Andrew Wiggins tagging along with the healthy Splash Brothers in Golden State is absolutely a perfect fit. Think about the role Andre Iguodala played to help the Dubs win three titles in four years. Being that lengthy 3 and D wing who's capable of stepping into the number one scoring role when you need him to, and lock down opposing team's best player on the other end, of course. And Wiggins may not be the defensive player that Iggy was in the Warriors system, but with high IQ defenders everywhere in Golden State, plus a coach in Steve Kerr who knows what type of defense it takes to win multiple titles, Andrew could be an elite stopper in the Bay. He's a perfect fit with this former dynasty and surrounded by the most deadly and efficient marksman in Stephen Clay. I think the Warriors finish third or fourth in the West next year, I think the fresh, healthy legs of KD and Kyrie will lead the Nets to an insane start in 2021 and place first or at the very least second in their conference by the end of the year. In the nation's capital, the only problem about the Wizards' backcourt excited about playing with one another is that Wall and Beal have both been in trade rumors lately. But Wall's not only, without a doubt, the fastest player end-to-end -end in the NBA, but you could argue that he's the best playmaker in basketball when he's fully healthy. So I think John Wall and Bradley Beal will immediately reestablish themselves as a backcourt to be reckoned with. But this time they'll be even more dangerous with Beal's recent superstar development. And I think they'll challenge for a top three to five seed in the Eastern Conference. In 2021, you're about to see those three teams make things a lot more interesting. But whether I talked about it or not, I want to know the reason why you're most excited about the upcoming season. Two shout outs at the end of next vid. Keep watching some of my recent content. This was Steve Flo, and I'll see you in the next video.